Continuous integration is important for any big software project, big or small. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode we're going to talk a little bit of continuous integration and specifically we're going to talk about a fabulous little site, little site, look at me, uh, <laughs> called AppBear. It's a, it's a tiny site that you use Facebook. These guys, uh, these guys might, they might, uh, they might make something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Just... something to do with apps and conveyor belts. <laughs> Anyway, Dave, tell us more about this uh, application conveyor belt that you found. Yeah, so it's it's called AppVair, and it, it's a hosted build system. I've been using it a bit for some of my open source projects and just wanted to talk a bit about that. So it is a paid service, and uh, so if, you, if you're trying, gonna use this in your organization, I mean, there's a, a monthly fee for it, but they do offer it free for open source projects, which is pretty awesome. And there, there's lots of services out there like this. Um, this one happens to do a really good job, I think, of doing Windows-based uh, hosting for the, the build agents, uh, which means that we can build .NET projects uh, on a Windows machine. That's what I've been mostly using it for. And you may have noticed on, on some GitHub projects, you kind of see these little build status badges. So I have that here on my Tag Helper Samples projects where it says, uh, app air build passing. If you click on that, it will take you to a build history for that project where it shows me shows me the history of all my builds. This was pretty simple to set up. If you want to create a new build here, it's just new project and I, w I won't go through this, uh, but you do have to connect it to you know whatever account is happens to be hosting your your application. and you pick your project and you work through some configuration. and they if I look at the settings here in the config for my project, for the Tag Helper Samples project, uh, it gives you a number of forms here, lots of general stuff in terms of the environment. So the environment I picked was Visual Studio 2017. Uh, they have an older one yep. here that seems to be a release candidate. Is it these guys that they do all of their builds inside Docker containers? Uh, you might be thinking of Travis CI. Oh, okay. Um, but I think there, there is really good support for Docker containers as well with that uh, You can, but these ones are hosted in Hyper-V VMs, the, the Visual Studio based ones for sure. I'm not sure about the others because I haven't really played around with them, but that one I know for sure. You know, you say Hyper-V, but I always hear Hyper-B and I, I worry that it's like a virtualization system made up entirely of angry bees. They know how to get stuff done though. That yeah. You know what? That would be really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, James. So you, you can create all this configuration here directly on the site just by walking through so you can configure all your build steps. But that's not quite what I did. Uh, if we go back to our project here, is I created this appvair.yml file, which I think you pronounce YAML, and if not, you should do that from now on. Yep, yet I'll another take... markup language. Yep. So in here, we, we just have some really simple configuration in terms of what's gonna happen. And as far as build scripts go, this is pretty straightforward, I think. I'll just zoom in a bit here, but you know, we have the version number, that's the version of my Tag Helper Samples project. A little bit of initialization for setting up Git. Uh, as part of the AppAir project I created, it already knows which uh, project it's working with, so it knows how to grab the latest source code. Uh, before build, I'm telling it to restore all the NuGet packages. I'm just doing .NET restore on the solution file. And then for the build script, I'm building each individual project. I might not necessarily need to do that. I could probably just build the uh, the, the main project there, but doing it individually, then if it fails on one of them, uh, I can see specifically that. And then there's the test script where I'm just changing the directory to, to my test folder and running .NET test on the test project. So that's all there is to that setup. And the way AppVair works then is that it starts out with this and then kind of merges it with any other settings that 
I happen to override in the on the project level here. So you can tell it to just ignore the the YAML file completely and just use what you've configured here, which we'll see later where that might be useful in the next episode where we talk about to, uh, using AppFair here to do deployments. So I also noticed in there that one of the under the settings um, options, uh, right, NuGet, there it is. So I imagine you could set up custom feeds as well. So if you were yeah, actually yeah. priving to, like, so this would allow you to set up um, integration for continuous deployment with a nightly feed and stuff like that, yeah. and then go to a different, like not your your final destination um, host or whatever. Yeah, so you could point it to my get or whatever you needed to point it to. Or yeah, make those nightly reason. builds available and yeah. Yeah, yeah so they 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 seem to have thought through all the main use cases. I haven't really come across anything yet where I feel like I, I'm stuck because I can't do what what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, so that's the, the basic piece. And if we look over here at kind of the history of my pull requests, so every every commit to master triggers one of these builds. And, and that's, I'm linking to this little badge here that gives me the status of that. But also if we go to the history of my pull requests here for the project, if we look at some of the past ones, uh, like here where I was updating to CS proj. Um, if we open up the little few details here on the checks, you can see now there's two of them that were triggered, and that's because uh, AppAir currently is configured to run a build anytime something's pushed to a branch. So it pulls down the code from that branch, runs a build, make sure it works. And then also anytime somebody submits a pull request, it will pull down the pull request, all the commits for that pull request, run the build, and make sure that it works. Uh, in this case, I'm getting two builds one for the branch, one for the PR, because I wasn't, I was doing the work on a, a branch that was part of this repo as opposed to an external contributor who was working on a fork and had submitted a pull request. So if it was an external contributor, we would have only seen a single uh, build triggered there. But the, the nice thing about this is if anybody submits a pull request, I immediately get a build that gets triggered and I get that, that quick feedback to tell me if at least is it compiling into the test run, which is pretty cool. And if we if we give that a try here, let's uh, let's just submit a a goofy something or other that breaks something. How can I make this code fail? Oh, you have come to the right person. <laughs> um, I was just remove a semicolon there. What's that uh, trick? If the what's the uh, character that looks just like a semicolon? <laughs> Oh, that's... oh, that was evil. What was that? There's some like Unicode yeah. character that's like that. Um, I don't know what it was. But we'll just go with this. We'll, we'll find that link to it. Maybe we shouldn't link to it. It's probably better for mankind if people yeah. don't know about that. Forget we talked about that. Yeah. No semis. So submitting this now, is a if for... request. Now, if for our our viewers in the in the UK, uh, semis are are lorries there, I believe. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely right. So we can see right away that that build was triggered. There's the commit message. My, uh, yeah, my commit message for it, and is it running yet, or just queued up? It's queued. I think you can go to the. Oh, it's still queued. There is a log uh, at the top right there. Yeah, I think. I yeah. Show. Oh, that's neat. Value cannot be null. <laughs> and yet it is null. <laughs> oh, it's it's there now. It should be there now. Oh, well, that's to download the log. We'll just refresh this. There we go. There it goes in the in line. Nice. It actually shows you the output, which is pretty cool. And. Eventually here we should see the build failure. So it's first, it's uh, doing the .NET restore first. Now it's trying to build that project, and we have a failure. Excellent. Which is exactly what we expected. And if we go back to the pull request, you can see the checks have failed, the build failed, and you can. It links back to the details so you can see what happened. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, lots of other fun things in here. Uh, if we look at the history, we can kind of see all our previous builds. 
I was playing around with a few things, but when you go to tests, you also see a breakdown of all the tests and how long they took to run, so you get that kind of nicely formatted as well. And the one last thing I wanted to show, which was something I kind of got uh, tripped up on a few times, is uh, if you didn't want this to run for every pull request, or if you didn't want to build it for, for branches, that configuration isn't part of that configuration is actually part of the webhook. So the way this all works is that uh, when when you add the new pro new build through AppVayer and you authorize your GitHub account with it, it creates a new webhook for that project. So now what it's doing is any time that I, in this case, create a pull request or push to a branch, it sends a message off to AppVayer and that's how it knows to trigger that build. Uh, so if you wanted to, for example, turn off, if you only wanted to do this build for pull requests, you could turn off this push piece and then it would only happen for pull requests or vice versa if you only wanted it for for your branches and uh, pushes to your branches, you could turn off the pull request piece. You won't find these settings anywhere in in app there because that's not where they exist. Mm. So that was about it it's... for today. Next time I want to talk about uh, taking this to, I guess, the next step, which was actually deploying the results of the app out somewhere. Awesome, cool, that's exciting. I'm especially excited about learning how to turn off building on certain branches. Yep. I know of it a project that could use that configuration. <laughs> Indeed, maybe we'll use that one as an example for that next episode. Yep. <sighs> That would be great. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, heck, even if you didn't enjoy this episode and you want a refund, uh, leave us a comment down below. And if you did like it, you can uh, edit. You can what? What's else saying? You can share it. Like, comment, and share. Thank you. Gosh, I'm so glad they changed this pack to help us with this. You know, <laughs> if they do want to. If they do want a refund, it is just a $50 processing fee. They can just PayPal that to us, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we look forward to that. Indeed. All right, so we'll see everybody on the next episode.